Hi guys, it's Rob from Urban Leaf. So it's been seven weeks since we started this experiment and I wanted to give you a little bit of an update on how things are growing. As a reminder, we bought some of the best selling grow lights on Amazon and we wanted to test them to see how they would do to grow a small indoor herb garden. If you haven't already done so, I recommend checking out the first video in this series for a full overview of the grow lights we're testing here or if you'd rather go straight to the listings themselves, I've included links for all of them below. We're planning to keep this experiment going for about three months in total. So if you want to see the final results, make sure you subscribe to our channel. But for now, I just wanted to give you a midway check-in to show you how everything is going. Some plants are definitely doing better than others, and some are even doing so well that they've started to flower. First things first, let's look at the control. Now I live in a second floor apartment in Brooklyn. The window I have these plants placed in faces due west, and there's a building right next to us that blocks out most of our direct light. Based on the time-lapse footage, I reckon this control sample is getting about one hour per day of direct sunshine, as well as some spillage from the other LED lights nearby. Of the sample under the lights, the strongest so far seems to be the sand seed. Remember that this globe had by far the highest PAR value in our lab tests? It's also a pretty expensive globe coming in just over $20. So the outperformance honestly isn't a huge shock. I'd say the next best is probably the Urban Leaf. I say probably because although it's on par with the Sun Blaster, the Sun Blaster is sitting on the right hand side of the windowsill where it gets much more natural sunlight and the urban leaf sample is on the left, which is in constant fall shade. One of the things I'm going to do is actually swap the samples over from one side to the other to try and even things out a bit. That way, each set of samples will have done roughly half the experiment on the sunny side and half the experiment on the shadier side. So I had a little bit of an accident when I was moving the plants. Uh, I was rough and I accidentally snapped off both the globe basil and the dill for the sansai light. I uh, so just wanted to give a quick side by side as they won't be included in our final measurements. Um, just visually, the, this is the sansai. It is looking quite a bit bigger than the urban leaf one um, and definitely was the winner at the time I snapped it, uh, as well as the globe basil is also looking much larger um, and I think was the winner at the time that I snapped it. Sorry about that guys, uh, there's still plenty of data, just lost two data points, but um, just wanted to show you where they were. One of the other things I wanna note about this setup is that it's really colder and drier than most plants like. Uh, as a reminder, it's January 22nd, so pretty much the dead of winter. Uh, although it has been colder and it will get more cold later on. Uh, today, the temperature right here is about eight degrees Celsius uh, with a humidity uh, in the low 30s. Uh, again, that type of environment will cause the plants to grow slower than they would um, in a warmer or more humid setup. So when we do the final wrap up at the end of the experiment, I'll give you data on the size and weights and all that. But I just wanted to give you a little bit on the water usage right now. So when I started, I filled these all the way to the top and that was about seven weeks ago. Um, and they're about 450 milliliters each. So under two different lighting setups, you can see that the growth is really proportional to the water use. So on the left, we've used almost all of our water. There's just about a centimeter left, so I'll add some to that bottle. But on the right, you can see we've only used, I don't know, the top three centimeters of water. So there's still plenty left. I won't be adding any to that marigold. I've got some more info in the description below about where you can get these lights. If you're interested in seeing the final results of this experiment, be sure to subscribe so you get a notification when we put that video out. Finally, if you're interested in just learning more about how grow lights work and how to set one up in your home, we've got another great video on that, so I suggest you check that out. That's it for now. Thank you for listening and happy gardening!